in one of your previous videos, you mentioned about Grigory Perelman. And you called him a one in a billion kind of mathematician. But why is there little to no information about him on the internet? Not even a single interview. Could you tell more about him and his solution of the Poincaré conjecture? So the Poincaré conjecture, I will not go into what it is. It's a very old problem. It was there. It, it was uh, uh, around for more than a century. And lots of mathematicians tried to solve it. And they all failed. And eventually this uh, gentleman, Grigory Perelman, was able to solve it. Now, why are there no interviews about him and no information? Because he's a very shy, reclusive, private kind of person. He does not give interviews. He's, that's the kind of person he is. There have been may, many personalities like that. For instance, in cricket, you had this guy called Kirtley Ambrose, a West Indies fast bowler, who would never give interviews to anyone. Nowadays, of late, he has changed and he's become more social, but for the longest time, he was like that. So many, many people are like that. Uh, so Grigory Perelman is a very, very private person, very shy person, reclusive person. He doesn't want fame. He he refused to accept the Fields Medal, which is the greatest uh, honor a mathematician can have. Uh, it's even higher than the Nobel Prize, right? The Nobel Prize is given every year in physics and various other fields, right? The Fields Medal is given out once in four years, only to people under 40. So that's an enormous honor. And, he, and it comes with a price tag, a price tag of a million dollars, I think. And he refused that. So he doesn't want any fame or recognition. He says that the only recognition I want is that the solution that I gave is correct. And that's that's enough for me. That's the kind of person he is. And of course, he was very hurt by the attempts of certain mathematicians to steal his proof. Uh, let me show you what that is. Uh, one second. So let us go back to Google. There is the thing. All right. So there is this article, very famous article in the New Yorker magazine, which is called Manifold Destiny, the clash over the Poincaré conjecture, a legendary problem and the battle over who solved it. And the one of the authors is Sylvia Nasser, who also is the author of this very famous book called A Beautiful Mind. So this cartoon the caption says is that uh, Grigory Perelman on the right says, if the proof is correct, then no other recognition is needed. But Xing Tung Yao isn't so sure. So this Chinese origin mathematician, Xing Tung Yao, essentially attempted to steal the credit from Grigory Perelman. What Perelman did is that he solved the problem so, so uh, this is the name of the article, Manifold Destiny. I, if you are interested, I would recommend you read it. It's a very interesting article. It came out in 2006. So what happened is that this guy, Perelman, he proved the Poincaré conjecture and he wrote up a paper with detailing the entire proof and he did not submit it to a peer-reviewed journal. He simply placed it on a preprint archive on the preprint archive, archive.org, arxiv.org. And it just sat there. And eventually people realized that this guy has solved the Poincaré conjecture. So this Chinese guy, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Xing, Xing Tung Yao. He's, he's also a very famous mathematician. I, I believe he has also been awarded the Fields, Fields Medal. So Xing Tung Yao, what he did is that he picked up the proof and he, he wrote a new paper along with a couple of students of his. Or maybe they wrote the paper, they were the primary authors or whatever, in which they expanded upon the proof, elaborated upon the proof, and said that this is the crowning achievement. And they kind of tried to take credit for giving the full proof of the Poincaré conjecture. That's the kind of thing that happened. Eventually, an Indian mathematician or student, graduate student, picked up the similarities between the two papers and he pointed out that the Chinese guys had essentially plagiarized Perelman's paper. And then there were retractions and they said that we have, we are not, and they changed the some of the terminology and they said they, they withdrew the term crowning achievement and all that. And eventually they were essentially shamed. That's what happened. 
but it doesn't seem to have done the the reputation of shingitung yao too much of harm that's how it is so because of this experience uh, peralma kind of withdrew into his shell and i think he just quit mathematics he quit doing mathematics after that and i'm not sure what he is up to these days but uh, yeah he's not cle- he's clearly not active in, in mathematics anymore so that's how it is he's that kind of that kind of person a very shy reclusive kind of person very private person and he was deeply hurt by all of this controversy and the attempts to steal the credit from him and that's why he has now withdrawn from the field and he doesn't give interviews so i if you are interested i would recommend you read that uh, this this uh, article manifold destiny very interesting uh, piece of mathematical history